All right, Adam, I'm ready. Good morning. How are you all this morning? Cold? We haven't even gotten started yet. What are y'all talking about? <laughs> okay, we'll see what happens in about a month because the real cold weather comes in. It's going to be cold next Sunday. Wow. Well, it is what it is. It's December. What did we think? It's always a pleasure to see all We welcome the Holy Spirit's presence here with us this morning because we recognize that without him, we can do nothing. We are no one, and certainly, certainly, without him, we would falter on every step we took. So I'm just praising God for his presence on this morning. Um, this morning's inspirational scripture comes from 2 Thessalonians the third chapter and the 16th verse. Now I tell you, this scripture from the minute I heard it read on Monday evening as we were meeting as an administrative board, I knew that this was going to be the inspirational scripture for the week because it touched me as soon as it was read as we began our meeting. And it reads, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in all ways the Lord be with all of you. Let me just read it again. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in all ways. The Lord be with all of you. When I heard that scripture read, it touched me so much so because it talks about the peace of God. And not only the peace of God, but that our having that peace of God I don't know if you all can really appreciate how important it is to have the peace of God. You're talking about not being able to sleep at night. We need the peace of God. You're talking about sluggish, feeling like everything's wrong. Your life is turned upside down. We need the peace of God because there is always going to be times in our lives where things are a mess. Oh, I know, not y'all life, right? It's all perfect. It's just Brock's life that's a mess. No, no, we all have our days and moments. I praise God that for, because of his peace, it's not all the time. It's up and down. We go through waves, but a scripture like this touches our hearts and our spirits and reminds us that all we need to do is look to him and we will have peace. Amen. Amen. This scripture ends with Paul telling the church at Thessalonica, the Lord be with all of you. So amen this morning. That is my prayer. That is our prayer that the Lord will be with all of you. Amen. 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 It please stand with me and pray our Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You all may be seated. And as always, you are absolutely welcome, whether you're at home or in this sanctuary, welcome. Welcome to church. We are so glad that you're here. And we want you to know that when you walk through our doors today, you didn't just walk into a building. You walked into a family. And regardless of who you are, where you came from, or what you look like, you are welcome here. Because at this church, we believe that God is love. And that he is in the business of rekindling lost passions, restoring broken dreams, and filling empty lives. At this church, we believe that life in Christ is not a formula of rules and laws but a moment-by-moment -moment relationship with Jesus. And his love is infinite and everlasting. Without pretense or condition or discrimination. At this church, we can't stand religion. But we love God. And if you're not quite sure what the difference is yet, we can't wait to show you. We're glad you joined us today. Welcome to church. Amen. Welcome to church. This morning's announcements. Um, please keep in mind that this coming Saturday, we will have our Christmas Eve candlelight worship service at 7 o'clock p.m. This certainly, certainly is um, a special worship service, and it is a time for us to celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ, his birth. Um, I love that service because once the lights go down and the candles are lit, it's just such a moving worship service. So please plan to be here on Saturday. The following Saturday is the biggest holiday of the season. Oh, no, that, that's not the biggest one. Um, okay, so it will be New Year's Eve, but what makes it so special is it's my birthday. Thank you. And so um, I am just pleased to have a venue that I can say it's my birthday and people don't go, oh, no, six days after Christmas. What in the world are we going to get or we just got or something? So I am just pleased that I don't have to concern myself with the old Christmas birthday gift. And as I asked you all, I asked you all for one gift on my birthday. And that is for you to come and be with me. I am not asking for another thing. I don't need anything else. I want your presence. Come be with us on New Year's Eve next Saturday, not Christmas Eve, the one after, so that we can celebrate the coming in of a brand new year. Um, certainly, uh, we are blessed. We are blessed. And my prayer is that you would join us at 3 o'clock for that New Year's Eve praise and worship service. And it will be a praise and worship service. Uh, in 2023, we will be continuing after that New Year's Eve service, really after Christmas Eve because we're doing a Christmas Eve service. We'll do a New Year's Eve service on that Saturday, and then thereafter, we will be continuing to have a Saturday worship service. That Saturday worship service is going to be a praise and worship service. It'll start at 3 o'clock weekly on those Saturdays. There will be a sermonic message during those praise and worship services. It just won't be the same traditional service that we have on Sunday. And I'm offering that as um, an alternative. There are some people who, for varied reasons, can't make it to church on Sunday, whether it's because they have to work, whether it's because of some other commitment they may have. I know those with young kids, they play all kind of sports stuff on Sundays now. I don't know why, but they do. And so you will have an opportunity to worship on Saturdays as well as on Sundays. Um, and I have committed to be here both days, and it's up to you. No one is required to be here. It's completely up to you. If you think you're going to be tied up on Sunday, come on over on Saturday and participate in praise and worship. 
There's no reason to miss Sunday service when you can be here Saturday or Sunday. Amen. Amen. I know that's something very new, very different for us, um, but I'm excited about it. AVAC, we are giving paper products this month. Um, those of you at home, please keep in mind that you just need to give, either dropping it off here or however, through our electronic giving market, that this is a gift for um, our ministry work, and we will go out and make those purchases. Um, our goal here is to just help one, because we realize that if each of us makes an effort to just help one, we certainly, certainly will be in a position to help many. Amen. Let me say this about the toy drive. We did very well. We collected many toys, and I am just so thankful to First Baptist Serenum for your giving heart and giving spirit. Some donated money. We had some that came and visited and gave money, others that were members that gave money, and I went and did all kind of shopping for kids' toys, and I am just thankful that we were able to be such a blessing to those who are less fortunate than we are. Um, I know I was talking to Lynn as we were going to Bible class, and I said to her, we kind of don't really think about it enough, but there really are people who don't have a gift for their kids. They just don't. Um, they just don't. And we, for, for many of us, we're blessed to a place where it's unimaginable not to be able to get at least one gift for the kids. But it happens, but because of people like us, because of people like you, those of you that are at home as well, we have been positioned to be able to be a blessing, and, and I am just praising God for the blessing. Amen and amen. Please join us for the singing of our first musical selection. The splendor of the King All the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me how our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. 
Amen. Amen. How great is our God. Amen. Uh, this morning's, you all know I enjoy myself at church. So I, you all better get on the bandwagon. <laughs> Amen. I leave in a much better space than I'm in when I get here. Amen. This morning's responsive reading, number 635 in the back of your hymnals, Christ incarnation uh, number 635 in the back of your hymnals turn with us if you would <clears throat> were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it there was a man sent from God whose name was John he came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him he was not the light but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man that is coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. Amen to the reading and the hearing of God's word. It is now time for our morning offering. Trays will be passed in our sanctuary. For those of you that are at home, uh, feel free to mail in your gifts, give, uh, drop them off at the church. Of course, you can always give virtually through our e-giving format, tithelead.com. Just go to our website, click on the giving tab, go down, there's a green button that says giving. You can't miss it. Hit that and you'll be able to give. Those of you that are in the sanctuary, I don't want to leave you out. If you want to give electronically, please do. I love giving electronically. It makes everything so easy for me. So feel free to take advantage of modern technology. It's just like swiping at the um, Walmart when you're in line and you swipe your card. It's the same difference and you don't have to worry about writing checks. Please join us in the singing of hymn number 125, Joy to the World.
Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you on this day for all of the gifts that have been given. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that every person who gave, no matter how much, no matter how little, that you would bless them with riches from on high. And then, Heavenly Father, there may be some who really, truly had a desire to give, but just did not have it. Heavenly Father, we pray that your blessings would touch their lives, Lord Jesus, that you would enrich them in such a way that they would have something to give back unto you on the next time that they are faced with a giving opportunity. We certainly lift you up and we praise you because you are more than worthy of all of the praise. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. It is now time for our joys and concerns. Let's see. I had a joy this past week. Um, my husband's company, uh, BBK Towing out of Detroit, received uh, a renewed five year towing contract for the Detroit Police Department. It was not something that was guaranteed to us. They went from 17 companies down to seven companies. And so certainly I am joyful that we made the cut because believe me, due to some of my own errors, we very much so could have been one of the 10 companies that were eliminated. Because they went from 17 companies down to seven, our business is gonna triple because now uh, there is just far less companies towing the entire city of Detroit, which is bigger than Pittsburgh is uh, here in Pennsylvania. And so certainly I am just excited. It starts tomorrow. If I was in Detroit, I would be at the business working that day so that I can help hold it together, but um, they'll be fine without me. And uh, so tomorrow at 8 o'clock a.m., the, the switch is going to take place, and we're just excited. Um, Terry Fox had a joy that his uh, cataract surgery on the second eye, just like the first, went well, and he has completed his treatment. Uh, certainly, we are continuing to pray for Mark Salata. Please keep him in your prayers. Uh, continue to pray for Craig, Holly Parker, Betty Lou, who has been doing better, but we're continuing to pray for her full and complete recovery. We're praying for Jalen this morning. Um, I want to put, uh, mm -mm, give me a second, it's coming. Dick Potter on our prayer list. Um, Dick has been under the weather. I've known that for a week or two, at least, I think since Ed told me. I have not spoken to him, and I promise you this week I am going to get on the phone with him just to check in with him and make sure he's coming along. Um, but I need you all to pray for Dick as well. You know, Dick is in his 90s, uh, just like some of our other members, but um, he, he really stands in the need of our prayers. Um, continue to pray for the clinks. I have uh, one unmentioned for my daughter, Sashay Lurie. Uh, please keep her in your prayers um, as well. All right. I don't have a mic. I should have one now. <laughs> we certainly are glad to see the waltzes. You all need to stand up and turn around. We're just glad to see that you, see you all survive the sickness, the plague of 2022. As you know, um, work has been really rough for me, but I have these three ladies, and Solange is one of them, Agnes and Abby. And Agnes left me and went to Boeing, Africa. She called me on Wednesday this afternoon. Oh. I'm like, who's calling me? You thought it was one of those fake, I need you to help me get out of jail calls, didn't you? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but I have to tell a joke. <laughs> I, I was listening to the church, uh, one of my friend's churches, 
and uh, they told this joke and I had to pass it on. Did you hear about the man who had an accident playing peekaboo? He's in the ICU. <laughs> Thank you. We know you have a funny bone. Thank you. Um, I'd oh, like to say how happy I am to have my husband home. He's completed his uh, basic training at the boot camp and he's moving on to. Amen. Amen. Moving on to um, another dark and long road. He'll be gone for four months after we get through the holidays. So we're just grateful that he's home and gets to be home for the holidays and his birthday. And we're grateful. Amen. Absolutely. Thank you for your service. And just so that you can know, we were praying for your safe travel, as you heard. And so um, certainly we will keep both of you and the kids in our prayers as you do what it is that you felt called to do. And certainly we will keep you in prayer. And we're very thankful for what you have given for us. So we thank you. So we do ask for continued prayers for this, whatever this is going throughout our house. My dad is still sick. Um, he, that's why he's not here today. Um, I have two tests coming up on Tuesday. So um, continued thoughts and prayers on that, that those tests come back okay. And uh, prayers for my neighbor and her husband. They have some, um, some serious uh, mental health issues going on next door and um, he's in the VA right now in their mental health department and so we really are asking for some prayers for their family. Thank you um, Don and just so you can know if you all wouldn't have got here today I was going to give you all kind of the business because I saw y'all at the Tex-Mex on yesterday. See this is why you don't put all your business on Facebook because the pastor did look and see that they checked in at the Tex-Mex down at the water works and certainly if they was down there eating all kind of Mexican they absolutely could have made it here so I was going to give you the business anyway. We're coming around. We're coming around. She, does she want to say something? She like, no, you wanted to hang out with me after service. I got you after service. Yes. Um, I just want to ask for prayers for all of our family, for our children and our grandchildren. Um, there are many different things going on, and I just pray that they all get God in their lives. Amen. Thanks. Amen. No, she said she didn't want to. I don't think he. Oh, you got a mic. Uh, Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Amen. Amen. Um, I am going where my mom. I don't know what you said, and I'm I'm famous for saying okay. So y'all watch the kids, cause she could have said anything, and I'll say okay, and they'll be on their way out here. You know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, oh. Merry Christmas. Uh, okay. A Merry Christmas. Uh, well, amen. <laughs> All right. Any others this morning? All right, Ron. Uh, there was a big store in Long Beach, California. It sold used paperbacks. A nickel, a dime, 15 cents. After browsing through there for a long time, I picked one book. It was about circle theor uh, theory. It says, how, how do you know how old the dinosaur's bone is? It says, because the rock it's in is millions of years old. So how do you know that the, the rock is millions of year, uh, years old? Because it had a dinosaur bone in it. That's called circle theory. So anyway. Right. I gave that uh, book to a pastor, and mm -hmm. a couple of weeks later, he showed a movie from uh, Calexico, uh, Mexico, where it showed dinosaur footprints and men's footprints in the same strata. Okay. Um, no, no, I'm very interested, but keep going. Uh, uh, well, I just wanted to tell a joke now. All right. This woman was in a terrible car wreck. 
and it caught on fire and she was burnt very bad. Many operations. Uh, but they ran out of skin from her body to, to make the skin grafts. Fortunately, the buttocks of her husband just was a perfect match uh, to finish it up, and the, both her cheeks needed that skin. And uh, one day she's looking in the mirror, and what a beautiful job they did on her, and she said to her husband, have I ever thanked you for donating that skin for me? He says, honey, every time your mother kisses you on the cheek, That'll be all the thanks I'll ever need. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Anyone else? <laughs> also, a thank you for prayer for Stephen. That he, Amen. he got such good word. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Stephen is the young man who's been battling from colon cancer, and he's really having a good response to chemo and we're just very thankful for that i have a joy um happy to see amanda this morning thank you for making it and you didn't tell me you were bringing someone with you i don't know your name so i'm sorry david so amanda and david welcome thank you for being here this morning all right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this, Lord, just thanking you for every joy that has been poured out before you this morning. And we just thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can laugh sometimes. Heavenly Father, people think when they go to church that they, it's so solemn that they can't even crack a smile, but it's just not so because joy comes from you. And I just praise God that we have an opportunity to express our joy and happiness, even in the house of the Lord. And we just say thank you for that. But Heavenly Father, as always, we have some concerns that lay before you, some that were spoken and some that were not, some that were expressed and some that were not, some that people are open with and chose to tell, and then, of course, those that didn't. And so we just pray, Heavenly Father, that you would touch every life, every person, every situation, Lord Jesus, touch. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would touch my daughter, Sashay, as she faces her situation, Lord. We call on you because you are a good and gracious God. Oh, certainly Mark Salata, Craig, Holly Parker, Betty Lou, Jalen and the family. We thank you for them, Lord, and pray you would be with them. Uh, we thank you for Solange and Abby, Lord, for their uh, move in Jen's life. We thank you for the Walt family and continue to pray for them and, and Dawn as she faces uh, testing. And we pray for the, their neighbor with the mental health challenges. Lord, we just lift up all before you that have been mentioned in this place, Lord, whether we remember or not. Our prayer, Heavenly Father, is over this week to come that someone would be praying and for all those people the pastor mentioned. And Father, we lift it all up before you. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Please join me in the singing of a musical selection.
Amen. It is now time for our sermonic message. This morning's sermonic message comes from Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 50 through 53. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this message. Allow it to be a, a blessing to the people. Touch their hearts and minds. Enrich them. Grow them. Cause them to have a little more pep in their steps. And yes, Lord, as I, I always pray, allow this word to bless the people in the same way that it's already been a blessing unto me. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The subject of this morning's sermonic message, the source, the source. Time is of the essence. This is a phrase that those of us that have hired a contractor for any reason have learned that it's very important. When we enter into agreements for work to be done, contractors tend to give estimated times of completion. They tell us things like it'll take two or three weeks for them to complete the project. Two to three weeks, oh, that's great. It'll all be finished in a flash. And we excitedly accept the proposal, sign the contract, and pay the required deposit. This is the beginning of our relationship with the contractor a relationship filled with such promise, and yes, anticipation of how the project will look once it's completed. But sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, as days go by, we discover that the contractor really has no idea when the project will begin or how long the project will take to complete. And in response to our questions, they say, what I gave you was an estimate meaning we were not sure how long it would take. Wow. <laughs> we have based all our hopes on an estimate, something that was not guaranteed. And now we have entered into the land of the unknown. When the project will begin, unknown. How long the project will take, unknown. And because doubt has crept in, will the final product be satisfactory, unknown. Further, because we failed to indicate that time was of the essence, there isn't much that we can do. So we wait. And while we wait, our frustrations build. We look for ways to get out of the contract. Well, we could always fire them, but good luck getting our deposits back. You know that will likely never happen without perhaps legal intervention. The reality sets in that we have invested too much and it will cost us too much to terminate the relationship. So we continue to wait. In life, sometimes we have to wait for the projects of our lives to be completed. Yes, sometimes we just have to wait. That's what we're doing this Advent season. We are celebrating a season of waiting, but this time, we're not waiting on something that may or may not happen. We're waiting on Jesus. And we already know that waiting on Jesus is a sure thing. He came and is coming again. And let me repeat that. He came and he's coming again. As to our projects, for us, time is of the essence. But for Jesus, not so much. You see, our timing is not always the right timing for us to be blessed. Instead, we need to wait on God. He knows what he's doing. So instead of focusing on how long it's going to take for us to receive what we want, what we've been praying for, let's focus on what we do during the when, during the while, and during the then of our lives. <laughs> the when. Let's be clear what has happened here. Here, we based our hope in someone that was not perfect, someone that doesn't love us, someone that has not given their life for us, and we allowed ourselves to become excited, to be filled with anticipation, and we invested far too much of ourselves into the someone. So 
much that we feel that as if we're stuck in the situation, like there's no way out. Well, please know this morning that there is always a way out. When the treatment from our someones is akin, not exactly like, but akin to what we experience with a bad contractor, please know that we are not stuck in the situation. We can get out. Yes, we temporarily lose our excitement and anticipation for the future. And of course, all that we invested is thrown away. But please hear this, we can get out. Sometimes, you see, we remain in bad situations because we focus more on what we lose than on what we would gain if we left. We stay on that job. We've been there five years. But if the five years have been years of mistreatment, why continue to stay? It's understandable that we need the job to pay our bills. But in today's economy, everybody is hiring. And we can definitely find other employment. Now, I recognize that I am not talking to the millennials right here. This example just doesn't work for them. Millennials freely move from job to job. They generally are not willing to allow themselves to be mistreated. And the moment they determine that they are being mistreated based on their own calculations, they leave. No, not find another job and then quit. That makes good sense. Uh uh. Just quit because they are not going to take it. <laughs> Admittedly, I don't have a full understanding for this generation, but I have come to recognize and respect their position. <laughs> you might as well. You might as well. There are other examples that may be more fitting, I think. Bad personal relationships, whether spouse, committed relationship, familial, friends, coworkers, or any other relationship, we stay. And we justify our stand for many reasons. The most prominent is that we've invested too much to walk away. Now, the problem is that we have placed our hope, anticipation, and investment in imperfect people. But that's easy to fix this morning because we have God, someone that we can always and under any circumstances depend on. I love this this morning because today we celebrate Jesus as the source. And let me explain. As we begin our relationship with Jesus and, and we do begin that relationship anew every day, we have ideas about how we believe things should go, how long our projects should take, what the end result should be, who will we marry, where will we live, where will we work. We have our lives fully designed in our minds. And yes, time is of the essence. We want what we want when we want it. But there we were trusting someone that cannot guarantee any of the particulars of our relationships, yet we want to micromanage God, <laughs> the one that will always do what is best for us. Sounds like our trust is misplaced. We need to channel our trust, our faith to the one that is infallible, the one that will never lie to us, the one that loves us more than we could ever imagine. Now, please understand, when we trust God, we absolutely enter into the world of unknowns. Hmm. That's what happened in today's text. Verse 50 begins, then he led them out as far as Bethany. The only thing these disciples knew was who they were following. Ladies and gentlemen, today, take time getting to know who we are following. Jesus Christ not just some human contractor, Jesus Christ, the earthly son of Mary and Joseph, the godly son of the Father, a man that was born just like you and I, a man that lived just like you and I, a man that died just like you and I will one day. But this man was born for our sakes. But this man lived for our sakes. But this man died for our sakes, and most importantly, this man rose from the dead for our sakes. He is 
our Savior. Yeah. Now take a look at these disciples. They had no idea where Jesus was leading them. They had no idea why he was leading them. And they had no idea what was going to happen once they reached the place that Jesus was leading them. Nevertheless, they followed. Please, take some time to look in our own mirrors. Are we following Jesus although we have no idea where he is leading us? Are we following him although we have no idea why he is leading us to wherever we are headed? <laughs> Are we following him although we have no idea what is going to happen once we arrive at our predestined location? I hope so because what we will learn just like these disciples is that there are blessings in following Jesus. He is the source. Uh, the while, the while. I feel that this message makes it sound easy to walk away from some things or some ones that we deem as mistreating us. I'm sure we all recognize that it's just not that easy. I also feel that this message thus far makes it sound like walking away, terminating the relationship is the only way to resolve the problem. No, that's not what's being said this morning. Walking away is not always the answer. Please spend much time in prayer before making such drastic decisions. Allow God to lead us just as Jesus did in today's text. So please don't run off on our own. Instead, trust God. He knows where he's leading us. He knows why he's leading us to our very destinations and he knows what he's going to do when we get there. Please notice, that what we see in today's text is faith, huh? Faith as we follow Jesus' lead. Ladies and gentlemen, this entire Advent season, our messages have led us time and time again to the fact that life is hard. <laughs> and indeed, this week, life is still hard. But following Jesus makes everything so much easier. So we don't know whether to leave the relationship or stay. Follow Jesus. Because while we follow him, we will be blessed. Recall, a risen Jesus was leading the disciples to an unknown place for an unknown reason. But while the disciples followed Jesus, Jesus began to bless them. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> while the disciples followed Jesus, Jesus began to bless them. And watch Jesus as he blessed them, because there is a message for all of us right here. Jesus lifted up his hands. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand this morning that lifted hands is a sign of blessing. Now keep in mind that very same thing, because we'll come back to it momentarily. So Jesus lifted his hands and blessed the disciples meaning that he called down the blessings of God upon them. Blessings, the good in our lives, blessings. All of those things that we're thankful for, blessings. All of our completed projects, blessings. I so, so wanna start listing examples of blessings, but I know that there are far too many to do them justice. So instead, take a moment, just take a moment and think about the numerous blessings each of us have experienced this morning alone. Hmm. We are so very blessed and even more so because we follow Jesus. Let me clarify. God blesses those that are saved as well as the unsaved. We serve such a gracious and merciful God. And we should recognize that we all at one time fell in the unsaved category. So appreciating that he loves and blesses the unsaved should really touch our hearts. But also know that he has even greater blessings to pour out on his faithful followers. Every day we should be striving to be in this category. Yes, faithful followers those living in the overflow of blessings that God is pouring out upon us. So, so very much to be grateful for. 
But there's more that happens in the wild. Yes, Jesus blesses us while we follow him. But we also witness miracles while he is blessing us. Yes, miracles. Please see in the text that because the disciples were blindly following Jesus and he was blessing them, they were positioned to witness his ascension, to watch Jesus as he was carried up into heaven. And they only witnessed this miracle because they were following him. Hear this today. Following Jesus positions us to witness miracles. Who? Some people think miracles don't exist anymore, but they do. Follow Jesus and we'll witness miracles. Amen for that. So while we are following him, know that he is blessing us and that what we are witnessing are miracles. Yes, things that we only see because we are faithful followers. Jesus, my friends, <laughs> is the source, the then. What happens after Jesus blesses us and we witness miracles? Then we must give a special gift to Jesus. Yes, it's the Christmas season, a season that focuses on Jesus' birth and the giving of gifts. Well, it's easy to recognize that there's nothing that we can give Jesus because he has everything. Huh. But not everything. Listen to this. God does not have everything. Huh? Imagine it. So here is the gift that we can give God. Like these disciples, we can worship him. Yes, show him. Amen. Yes, show him how much we love him. Yes, show him how much we appreciate him. Yes, show him how much we adore him. Yes, we can give him the gift of worship. Please hear this today. Since I've been here, we have worked to move from being a congregation that uh, is relatively quiet to one that openly praises and worships God. And I'm personally thankful for the, for the progress that we've made. It is noticeable. I hear you speaking back to me. I hear you when you say amen. I see you when you wave your hands ever so slightly. Yes. <laughs> We're getting more adept to giving God the one gift that we have to give him, our worship. And then let's not forget our praise. Yes, telling God thank you for his grace, mercy, goodness, kindness, and all of the things that he daily blesses us with. Yes, let's thank him. Oh, thank you, Lord. And tell him just how great he is. This is our gift to him. <laughs> and let's give our gift in the same manner as the disciples. First, we are to continually bless God. Yes, Keep worshiping him. Keep praising him because he keeps blessing us. Uh, in fact, allow me to challenge us in here this morning. As long as God blesses us, let's commit to praise and worship him. Mm. Yeah. I know, I know that some of us are not comfortable verbally or even outwardly praising and worshiping. Some were even taught that to speak out in worship service is wrong. But please know that at least for First Baptist to rent them, here in this place, please feel free to praise and worship God however we see fit. Amen. For some, it will be quietly, and that's okay. For others, it will be with a shout and or a dance. <laughs> Boy, do we miss Donna Taylor this morning. Someone that had no problem grabbing a partner and dancing in praise. And of course, like Jesus, praising with the raising of hands. I told you we'd come back here. If we don't say a word, at least raise our hands in praise to God. Remember, it's our gift to him. <laughs> Let me close because I've already preached too long. <laughs> the 
another thing we need to notice that the disciples praised and worshiped Jesus with great joy. Oh, yes, great joy. Joy that Jesus was born. Joy that Jesus loved. Joy that Jesus sacrificed. Joy that Jesus died. Joy that Jesus rose. Joy that Jesus blesses. Yes, joy, ladies and gentlemen. Joy because Jesus is the source. Hmm. The wind follow him. The wild receive his blessings and witness miracles. The then with great joy and worship praise him. Ah, yes, praise him for his many, many blessings. And never forget, please never forget, Jesus is the source. Amen. Oh, we have so much to be thankful for. If there are any who don't know Jesus, you need to get to know him. If you're unsaved, you need to get saved. All it takes is for you to believe in your heart and to confess it with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross, and that he rose again from the dead. It's just that simple. No fanfare. You don't have to run around the church three times first. No. <laughs> All you have to do is believe it and speak it and you're saved. I tell you, whether you're at home or in this place, if you don't know Jesus, get in touch with me so that I can talk with you more about Jesus. And I promise you, I promise you, as everyone who watches me in service or virtually knows, I'm not going to let you get off the phone with me until I tell you about First Baptist Church of Tarentum. Because this place is filled with people who have the biggest hearts imaginable. They just love, they love, and they shower down that love on everyone they come in contact with. <laughs> My prayer is that all would give us an opportunity to show them the love of First Baptist Tarentum. Amen and amen. Please join me in singing of our closing selection. sing these songs as I often do but every song must end and you never do so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again cause all that I have is a heart
Don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Oh, come on my soul Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul Amen. Amen. Please stand with me. I just love church. You all have no idea. Stand up with me, please, because it's time to go home. The Steelers playing today, Craig? They playing today? One o'clock? We going to win today? We keeping hope alive. That's what I'm hearing. We, we, they still haven't made the decision? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. All right. We're not, we not going to concern ourselves with the, with the Steelers today because we were in a good mood until just that minute. All right, you all. Let us pray and you all go home, okay? Amen. Heavenly Father, our prayer on today is that your Holy Spirit would be with us as we leave this place. We know that you are always with us, but please, Father, allow your presence to be felt and known. Crown our heads with wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Protect us, keep us, wrap your arms of protection around us. And Father, yes, indeed, give us peace. Bring us safely back to this place again. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
And that's this one? How do we know that's this one? Oh. You just plugged it in. Huh. So it's this cable. Well, that cable works. It doesn't like this long 50 foot cable. I wonder why. That's so that's a bad HDMI cable. I would. My Here's my guess. Is, so. HDMI is digital signal, which means it's just voltages. My guess is that this camera is not outputting a strong enough signal for it to make it the 50 feet. So here's how we'll check. Now, we're gonna plug the computer into this and see if the computer will travel through it successfully. Okay. And now we'll let us know that the cable works, but the camera might just not work. Like So maybe it's a bad HDMI cable. Can HDMI cables go bad? They can, yeah, just like anything else. It's weird. This is brain stuff new. Yeah, that's weird. 
So no luck on that. It's not the computer science coming through. So wait in the new age demo, that one's bad. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, usually an HDMI cable is just an HDMI cable. Maybe she bought an off brand. Well, I sent her the link. Maybe it was out of stock and she chose what they gave her. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, that was it. They were like, we don't have this, but we can give you this. And she was like, okay. <laughs> this is the European version. <laughs> Thank you. 